Hello, hello. Welcome to Unity of Faith Church. Father, we thank you for your word. Oh, it's your word. It's what's so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we're healed, saved, set free, and delivered according to your word and according to our words in Jesus' name. We're going to talk about today the simplistics of faith. The simplistics of faith. So first of all, if you think faith is hard, then you just don't know the simplistics of faith or you're not using the simplistics of faith because faith is the easiest teaching in all of the human race. Amen. Faith is the easiest teaching in all of the human race. It's easier, it's easier to live in faith and talk faith because you are created by God to live in the lifestyle of faith. You're created by God to do it. So God's backing up the lifestyle of faith that you live. So if everything seems hard in your life, you need to make sure, you're, if you've got a scripture for that, look in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, in verse 5, it says, Examine yourself to see if you're in faith. Examine yourself to see if you're in faith. Faith. I've heard people say, well, it don't matter. You just pray and live the best you can. Well, you're not in faith. Because faith is very zero-pointed in. And the zero-pointed in is, number one, examine yourself to see if you're in faith. Prove to your own selves. You don't got to prove it to God or anybody else. Proved, I had someone say, I'm going to prove to God I'm going to serve him today. And he's, he's been wishy-washy ever since because it's, it's not about proving to God. It's about proving to yourself that you're in faith. So the number one thing is examine yourself to see if you're in what? Church? No, but you need to be in church. Examine yourself to see if you're tithing. No, but you need to tithe. You got to tithe to stay hooked up. Uh as well, examine yourself to see if I do this or that or that or that or that or make sure I rub enough robes and beads and put dimes in box, light candles and say this and say that and all that. But the Bible doesn't even teach those things. Examine yourself to see if you're in faith. Okay? Prove to yourself. That means you got to get it solidified in yourself. And how do you do that? Know ye not at your own selves how that Christ Jesus is in you. If you still think God is in heaven, Jesus is in heaven, Holy Ghost is in heaven, and that's where they live at, and they don't live in you, then you're not even in faith. According to the Bible, you're not even in faith. What's about Bible faith now? We're not talking about religiosity. So the number one thing, that you have to do is you have to examine yourself. Oh God, please examine me. No, says you didn't examine yourself. Well, how do you examine yourself? Well, if you have to, listen to this uh, video a thousand times till you figure out what it is that how to how to live in faith. Number one thing, as far as when you receive Jesus. Christ Jesus is in you. The number one thing that you believe to start your faith journey, your faith life, your faith walk, your faith lifestyle, number one thing is you got to know where God lives. If you think he's still in heaven, if you think he's still doing all this from a distance and you don't realize he is in you, Christ Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit is in you. Amen. If you don't know that, then you're going to act just like someone that, that, that they think God's afar off. They don't, want, they don't really know the Bible or believe the Bible, so therefore they may act religious and carry crosses and some holy water or something, you know, just water uh, or whatever, and anoint and everything. <laughs> Excuse me. They're outside mowing, getting everything spruced up. Because this is the best year we've ever had in our whole life. Amen. So uh, that's number one thing. Where does God live? In you. you. I dare to say that you'll talk different if you think God's in you. 
you'll act different. You'll, you'll treat things better. You'll be easier to get along with. Why? Because I mean, God of the universe living on the inside of you. See? So it's different, you know. Uh, if you think he's way out in the blue yonder, not even paying attention to you or anything else, well, then you'll act just like that. You'll act like someone has been neglected. But uh, you can, you don't have to do that. So, so faith is the simplest teaching. Remember, the teaching today is the simplistic of faith. And so we have to see what? Examine yourself to see if you're in, say it like this, the simplistic of faith. Well, the simplistic of faith is only one thing. To start. The one thing to start, we got to believe that God is inside of us. And if he's not, you just ask him to come in. He'll come in. Romans 10, 9. He'll say, Lord Jesus, come in. He'll bring God uh, you know, the Holy Ghost and all three of them live inside of you. And so he's right there. So, but the one thing about faith that most people miss is this. When they talk, when they talk, what they're talking is what they're taking. So if you don't want that, whatever it is, in your life, then don't talk that it's in your life. If you talk sickness, you're going to have sickness. If you talk brokenness, you're going to have brokenness. Whatever you're talking is what you're taking. Okay? And then, you have to realize that faith is always spoken no such thing as silent faith. You ever heard someone say, I got a silent prayer. Please pray. God knows I got a silent prayer. Where's that at in the Bible? No, that's ignorance gone to seed and it's a religiosity thing and it separates you from God. Then you wonder why it never did work. Because you're not praying according to the Bible. You're not speaking according to the Bible. How do you know if you're in a religious church? They pray those prayers. Don't walk. Don't walk. Run from that place and get to a faith church. <laughs> Amen. You'll die in that other place. Get out of there. Get out of there. Don't walk. Run from it. <laughs> Amen. Get out. Oh, I'm going to change him. No, you're not. No, you're not. Because it's a religious, their foundation is religion, not Jesus. Oh, they throw Jesus in there every once in a while. But it's not based on Jesus and his word, and you speaking his word. Okay, so we're going a little bit farther now. So faith is always spoken present tense. Because that's the way the Bible is written, it's present tense. That's the way faith scriptures are all written, present tense. But what would that sound like? Instead of praying and then saying, I believe with all of my heart that God's going to do that someday. That's not faith. Sounds right, don't it? If you're in a religious setting, but it's not faith. Faith would just simply say, I have whatever it is that you requested. You just say, I have it. You leave the request off and just say, thank you, Lord, I have, and you just say whatever it is you have. If you want, and you have, then you, 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 you use a lifestyle of faith. That means it not, that's not just on Sunday or Wednesday. It's all the time when you're by yourself, when you, nobody's around. When you're talking, you can't, you can't be talking, oh, well, I'm just talking that way on Sunday and talking that way on Wednesday and the rest of the week. I'm just, I bless God, I'm just going to say it the way I see it. Well, you're an idiot then. Because the Bible plainly says faith does not go by what it sees. Faith goes by what the Bible says. See that? So emphasize that in your life. Catch yourself. Are you saying that God's going to do it? I'm waiting patiently for God to do it in the future. Faith never future. Faith is always right now. That means you speak it right now. I have whatever it is. 
person, place, or thing, whatever it is you've released your faith on, oh, I'm waiting on God to give it to me, then you hadn't released your faith yet. But I believe he can. You hadn't released your faith yet. But I believe he wants me to have it. Well, it's his will if he wants me to have it. Now, if he wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. If he don't want me to have it, then, then he won't give it to me. You're not in faith yet. Those, those, all those things, I know, I know people say them all the time. Just because, just because people say them all the time don't make them right. Did you know that? Did you know if a bunch of dumb people, that they're dumb about faith, they're all going to talk the same thing. That's where religion comes in. And so since they're all dumb about faith, they're dummies about faith, they're dummies about God's word, then they're all patting each other on the back and giving each other dinners and when so-and-so dies or whatever. Why? Because they don't know how to operate in faith. Or if they do know how to operate in faith, then they're in rebellion if they don't operate in faith. They're in rebellion? Yeah, it's, serious. it's a serious offense. But, uh, God calls it evil. So, well, I'm believing God's going to do it. Well, let me, let me, if you believe God's going to do it, something that he's already done, he said in his word he's already done it, then that's futile. That means it's useless. Now, I know we use the word dumb and the word stupid and the one word ignorant and the word, we're not calling the person that. We're saying what they have learned, calling faith, those things, according to God, you think I'm rough on saying, on saying uh, stupid, dumb, ignorant, and all that. Uh, the Bible's plain on that. It says that. And so, and then the, you think I'm rough saying it. Paul said it's dumb. You know what dung is, don't you? If you don't look up dictionary, you'll know what it is then. And I'm not going to say it on here. But, you know, you, you're not supposed to say shit and stuff like that over the internet, so I'm not going to say it. And so, but that's what it would be equivalent uh, to equivalent to uh, when you're going in faith. So all that junk that you get dreamed up in your head and you start saying, I don't know why it's taking so long. Wait a minute, you just said you don't believe you received. No, I didn't. I said, I don't know why God's not taking so long. That, that, that means you believe you, he didn't give it to you. So you're not in faith. Because real faith, Bible faith, does not question. It's not questioning God. Is The, the question is with you. Why are you not in faith? Number one reason, you just don't know. Or if you do know what to do, then you just don't do it. So don't be lazy in faith. Because it'll kill you. It'll kill you. So, well, I'm just looking for sympathy. I'm just looking for a pat on the back saying I'm okay. You don't need that. What you need is operating faith and then the joy of the Lord your strength. Because you don't have all the other pressures on you then. Because you can't have faith and pressures at the same time. You can't have faith and worry at the same time. You can't have faith and hate at the same time. Faith is singular. Not the all the junk. I'm going to worry and then I'm going to do faith. No, you're not. You're not that, don't, that is not going to work. It's like oil and water. It don't mix. It's not going to mix. So what do you do? Well, you, when those thoughts come, you have to realize that's not you thinking them. Worry, temptation to worry. Wait a minute, who's bringing temptation? Well, God is. Where's the temptation coming from? Just, just floating through the air? No, it's the enemy, see? So what do you do? You say, ah, that's not me. He don't walk up and say, this is the devil. I'm going to have you worry and fret today. No, he don't do that. He walks up and he says, oh, this is the way you feel it. Look at this. Look at what they did. Look at what they said. Look at what they did. Look at what you said. Look at what you did. Look at, look at, look at. But see, faith don't look at, this, at their self. Faith don't look at the enemy. Faith looks at the word. Woo, I can preach a whole thing on that right there. Faith don't look at self. Faith don't examine self. Faith does not examine what the devil's doing and rehearsing it. Faith looks at the word and then says the word. Okay, let's say it one more time. Look in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 5. Examine yourself whether you be in faith. You got who's, who's examining it? God! Oh, God. No. Examine yourself. Listen to yourself talk. See, 
Who's that talking to you? I ain't going to listen to this faith stuff no more. Well, who's that talking to you? See, they think it's them. They think they're smarty britches. No, they're dummy. They're dummy britches. <laughs> Why in the world? It's the simplest teaching in the whole world, and you're trying to do something else. That's the enemy. If you can't see that, then you need to pray Ephesians, the first chapter, every day. I've prayed it every day for years and years and years, and I've read Ephesians over a thousand times. Not at one setting, but I've read it several times a day until I it was way past a thousand times, I'm sure, in my lifetime. But just one day after the other, after that, six chapters long. Don't take very long to read those six chapters. And do it till you reach a thousand mark. And uh, sometimes I had to read it four or five times a day, so I, did, I got to a thousand fairly quick. And uh, but then underline all the faith scriptures. What you're doing, you're loading yourself with ammo. And when the thoughts come, it's opposing to faith. If you don't know what real faith is in the Bible, talking about Bible faith now, not religiosity junk, then when the thoughts come, you'll just think they're all right. Oh, God wants you to have that. It's in His timing. But see, if you know faith, you'd realize Hebrews 11 1 says, and now faith. Right now. Hello. 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 So faith's not future. Faith's now. Faith's always spoken now. You always receive now. Well, my body, faith don't go by body. Faith goes by the word. Nowhere in the Bible it says, put your faith in your body or yourself. I, I, I had people. I had people down the church, uh, down the road here. They called a church. I'd go there and help them, you know, strengthen them, shout amen a little bit. They'd always say, everybody wants to put their faith in God. You need to put it in yourself. No, you don't. The Bible says don't put no confidence in the flesh. See, you're not, the, your flesh is not the real you. The real you is a spirit man in you. That's what you connect with God with, nothing else. Isn't that good? We have it very simple. We're, it's the simplest in the whole entire world. If there's other people in the universe, it's simpler than anything in the whole universe. Amen. Faith in God. Examine yourself. Listen to yourself talk. I believe it's going to happen, Brother Mike. I believe, Pastor Mike, it's going to happen. I'm praying really hard. Bible doesn't even teach that. Bible says you believe the second you receive. How do you receive? No, the Bible doesn't even teach that. The Bible teaches what? Ask, believe, receive. Well, I'm waiting on the receiving part. No, you receive right then. Didn't say going to receive. Receive right then. Well, how do you receive? You receive with your faith. But I can't see it, wear it, drive it, smell it, eat it. Nothing with my five senses. Correcto mundo. That's why you have to use your faith because it doesn't go by the five senses. It goes by what the Bible senses is. You have Bible sense instead of natural human sense. Amen. So be blessed today. Be healed today. Be whole today. If you don't know Jesus, say, Jesus, I got you now. You're my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Holy Spirit, fill me now. Show rumbo cambre di scala. That's you. Go back and watch all the videos. Mike Riley, tongues. Mike Riley, the biblical way to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That'll give you some ammo. Amen. Go back and watch all the videos. There's 700 and some odd videos. They're all free. Watch them. If you want to send something, connect with us. You'll be glad you did. You won't miss it. God bless you. Lord, there's over 44,500 and something views, even as we speak. So uh, you'll be blessed. You'll enjoy it. Amen. Even if we had no views, still do what God wants you to do because it's not about the views, it's about what he told you to do. That's true success. Say this for a minute. Let's read it one more time. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Examine yourself to see if you're even in faith. Prove to yourself. That means you've got to settle it. You've got to solidify it on the inside of you. I'm settling it with the devil. The devil's whipped. Why would you bother with him? Uh, and know to yourself Jesus Christ is in you and if he wasn't in you before the video and you prayed that prayer Lord come in give my life to you he's in there now amen 
Holy Spirit came too. You got born of the Spirit, but then you got filled with the Spirit and spoke in tongues too. Amen. And the Corinthians says, I will. Your will is involved. I will. See, faith is a choice. It don't happen by chance. Everything in the Bible, you get saved not by, not by chance. You get saved by choice. You choose to be born again. You choose to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You choose to be healed, Isaiah 53, 5, and a whole bunch more. You choose to be financially successful by giving and tithing and releasing faith on it. So that's why we make it available for you to, uh, if you want to go broke, just don't give. You'll stay broke. I don't care how much money you get, you'll lose every bit of it. <laughs> Amen. So don't do that. So what do you do? Just continually to give and you'll continually get blessed. That's simple. Faith is simple, not hard. And you always speak it present tense. That means when you prayed and you said, thank you, Jesus, I have. Guess what? You have. Don't say, thank you, Jesus, I wish I had. No, thank you, Jesus, I'm going to have. Thank you, Jesus, one of these days when you see fit, if it's your will. No, all that stuff's rubbish. Dung, the Bible says. So what do you do? You say, thank you, Jesus, I have. Even though you can't see it, feel it, wear it, feel it, touch it, taste anything. And you know what? It shows up. It'll show up. It'll show up. And uh, how long you had your phone now? How long you had your phone now? My phone? Uh-huh. Uh, three months. This one here? I want to have my phone with me. No, how long have you had it? Oh. Two months. Two months, okay. But she had this phone two months, but before that, her phone kept going out different times. So what'd you do? We started saying, no, that phone's blessed. You know, you want to say, stupid phone. <laughs> Our brother, he takes the phone, hit it on the table a few times, like it's really going to help, you know? And so what do you do? You got to make sure you're speaking the blessing, even if aggravation tries to come. <laughs> because that's, a, that's that you won't be in faith if you do. So and then her phone tried to do the exact same thing what was it, last month or this month? Yeah. Tried to do the exact same thing. And uh, so the Lord said, well, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I was, it was messing up, couldn't get it to work. I said, let me see your phone. I got it, put my hand on it. I just prayed a prayer and I handed it back to her and it started working. You lay your hands on the sick. Didn't say just sick people, sick anything. You got sick billfold, <laughs> financially sick. You know, mentally oppressed, whatever it is. Lay your hands on yourself. Speak the word over yourself. No, I'm the healed, saved, set free, and delivered. That's what salvation is. Have a good one. Have a great one. God bless.